I'm using as my slides uh, actually the B exam defense of my student Ben Hawkins, who he teaches now at, at San Jose State. But I want to use some of these slides. I won't go over all of them, but I want to use some of them to illustrate some of the application of the things that we've been talking about. Any comments or questions so far? Yes. All right, let's have a quick vote. How many people are currently taking me seriously? How many people are not taking me seriously? Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I can do the whole thing in the yip yip alien voice. Like, Presentation. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, I'm going to talk specifically about Ben's project. And Ben's project is motivated by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So I'll give you a little bit of background on tuberculosis and mycobacterium tuberculosis, why we might use dielectrophoresis to analyze cells, and then I'll talk about some of the specific things that, that he did. Okay, so Ben was interested, and we continue to be interested in tuberculosis. Tuberculosis isn't something that's a real big problem in North America, but it's definitely something that is prominent in other parts of the world. And in particular, if you look at the distribution of tuberculosis, you see that there's not really much in North America or Europe or Oceania, but there's a lot in the developing world. <clears throat> so tuberculosis, while we don't think of it as being a big, big problem here in the States, is a big worldwide problem. Furthermore, if you look at tuberculosis, you'll see something that's distinctive about it. In particular, the reason why the genus is mycobacterium is that it's a bacterium, but it's a bacterium that has a cell envelope that's kind of like yeast. And yeast is renowned for being pretty robust. In fact, there are a couple of different things that overlap that are very interesting to us. If you look at these envelope proteins, the stuff that's in this outer part of a mycobacterium model, uh, mycobacterium cell, you find a couple different things. One is if you take these chemicals and you look at them in isolation, if you just take those chemicals and you put them in tissue, those chemicals alone will cause an inflammatory response. The same inflammatory response that's seen in tuberculosis. So the lipids alone cause an inflammatory response. Second of all, because this envelope is very thick, it's difficult to get antibiotics inside this cell. And so if I want to kill this cell, it's relatively difficult to get antibiotics inside. Third of all, if I look at the properties of this membrane, and I put that into a multi-shelled model of the polarizability of this particle, I'll find that the frequencies that dictate whether this particle is attracted to or repelled from a region of high electric field are a strong function of these properties. So I have one thing that simultaneously is the thing that causes the problem with tuberculosis. It's the thing that makes it hard to kill tuberculosis. And it's the thing that describes its dielectrophoretic response. So this is the reason why we chose to address this problem. <clears throat> and if we, if we zoom in, you can see that biologically, this envelope has a whole bunch of different stuff. And the detail isn't really that important. The way it relates to class is that one of the things we'll do in our next lecture is we'll talk about how we can develop a multi shelled model to describe this polarization response. We'll find that if we solve the Laplace equation, no matter how many shells we have, as long as we know the properties of those cells, we can take that sphere and we can always turn its response back to an equivalent dipole with equivalent properties. And that will allow us to calculate out, for example, what the clausius mazzotti factor is for any shell, any spherical object that's made of shells. And in fact, you can do it for an ellipsoidal, uh, for an ellipsoidal object that has confocal shells. <clears throat> OK. So we've already talked about DEP. We've talked about this idea that we have polarization both inside and outside the particle. In a uniform field, that doesn't cause any force. But if we have a non-uniform field, the fact that the electric field is higher here causes a net force. We can write an equation here that gives the time average of the expectation of the force uh, for dielectrophoresis. And this, again, is this description of this clausius mazzotti factor that we've talked about. You can see that Ben's notation is a little bit different in that he uses a star to denote this complex quantity, but this is basically the same thing. <clears throat>